Good morning, Calvary. It's Pastor Chad with uh, your word for the day. And today we're kicking off kind of a new series on this. Uh, we're going to be talking about favorite Bible characters. And uh, I'm going to share with you uh, today one of the, the Bible characters that is my favorite people in the Bible. Their story is powerful in my life. But you're not just going to hear from me and Pastor Joe. We've invited a, a lot of our staff to, to share their favorite Bible characters. So over the next couple of weeks, you'll get to hear from a lot of different people. And hopefully that will be encouraging for you as you get to uh, uh, get some insight into how they think and relate to Scripture. So uh, I want to share with you about my favorite Bible character, which is Gideon. Gideon's found in the Old Testament. His story is found in the book of Judges, uh, chapters 6, 7, and 8. And it's a crazy story. It's an incredible story. I hope you'll read that today. Uh, it won't take you that long, and it's quite dramatic. But let me just tell you in a nutshell what happened. Gideon was uh, a guy. He was uh, uh, in a family that was insignificant, unimportant. Uh, and the Israelites were under the, the oppression of a country called Midian. And, uh, and God called Gideon to lead an army against them. And, uh, and not only did he, he lead an army against them, but it was a very small army. So there were like 180,000 Midianites. And, uh, and God told Gideon to go and fight them with 300 men. So here, here's how the story unfolds. Gideon is, is hiding and an angel appears to him and says, uh, God's chosen you to lead an army against Midian. And Gideon says, who, me? I'm, I'm nobody. I'm a nothing. Uh, our family is the least in our tribe and I'm the least in my family. And God says, no, you're the one. Uh, you're going to lead them in your power because I'm with you. And then, uh, and then Gideon kind of leads a family rebellion, tears down the altar to Baal in his home. And, and, uh, and then God says, okay, call an army. And, and you may have heard of the fleece, putting out a fleece. Gideon did that. He wanted God to confirm that he had called him to do this. And he put out the fleece and God confirmed. And so Gideon assembled uh, the men of Manasseh, his tribe, had like 32,000 of them. Uh, God said, that's too many people. Uh, you're going to get the credit for it if you win. So uh, send everybody who's afraid home and 22,000 left. So there's 10,000 men uh, who are unafraid. I like to call them the Old Testament Marines. And then uh, God said, Gideon, that's too many men. Uh, I don't want you to get credit for being a great strate uh, you know, strategy, general, war guy or whatever. So he said, uh, hey, take him down to this creek and have him drink some water and send home everybody who drinks the way I don't like. And Gideon is left with 300 men, 300 men to attack an army of 180,000. And, uh, and the crazy thing is Gideon does it. Uh, God gives him this, this nutso strategy of going down there and using, you know, uh, torches and lamps and trumpets and uh, they surround the camp and they blow the trumpets, they break the, the pots, they hold the, the torches up, they yell the sword for the Lord and Gideon and the Midianites all kill each other. It's an amazing story. Again, check it out and read it. So Gideon wins the day, God wins the day, delivers his people. Now, here's why I love this story. Uh, it, just real, real quickly, uh, I love it because Gideon is insignificant. He's a nobody. Uh, I can relate to that. Uh, I, I know right now I'm pastor of Calvary and, and thousands of people are watching the websites and watching the, the online services and thousands come on the weekends when we actually can meet. But uh, it's not how I started. I started as a nobody. I started uh, insignificant. Uh, it's only by the power of God that anything has, good has happened in my life, and I know that. Uh, and so when I read the story of Gideon, uh, that's where I came from. I, I certainly understand when he says, uh, my clan is the weakest, my family's the weakest in my clan, I'm the weakest in my family. I get that. Um, uh, I also love the story of Gideon because Gideon is a skeptic. He's a skeptic. I mean, he, he keeps asking, are you sure, God? Are you sure? Why, you know, in fact, when the angel shows up and tells him that God's going to deliver him, he says, well, why has God let this happen to us? Why, why is God even allowing all these bad things to happen? He, says, he wants to know why. And I relate to that. I always want to know why. I always want to know what's up. I want to know what's behind the scenes. I, you know, I just naturally question stuff. So when you ask questions about the Bible or ask questions about faith, I love that because I relate to that. Um, I also love uh, the story of Gideon because Gideon is a coward. I know, I know, that's a harsh word. And in the end, he ends up leading the, the, the fight. But, but he really is afraid throughout. Uh, 
In fact, he asked God to validate this four different times in the story. He, he says, if it's really you, God, then do this. It, God, if it's you really want me to do this, then make the fleece wet, make the fleece dry. God, if it's really you, and, and God you know, confirms four different times, Gideon, you're the guy, I'm going to do this. And, and he, would just, he was afraid. And I can relate to that. There's a lot of times that God has asked me to do things that I just have been afraid to do. Uh, but here's why I love the story, because Gideon is crazy obedient. In the end, even though he's a skeptic, even though he's afraid, even though he's insignificant and nobody, he still is crazy obedient to God and he executes this ridiculous strategy and God works a miracle through him. And, and you know why I love that? Because it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done, uh, how afraid you are, how skeptical you are. God can use you if you will step into crazy obedience. What does crazy obedience look like? Uh, it looks like loving your enemies. It looks like forgiving the people who have abused you, hurt you, wronged you. It, it looks like uh, being kind and patient with people uh, even when they're not. You see, following Jesus really requires crazy obedience. But when we do that, then like Gideon, we're going to see miraculous results and God's going to give us the victory. I hope you're more like Gideon every single day because that's what uh, I'm trying to be like too. Crazy, obedient. In Jesus' name, have a great day.